This December I'm making a Christmas calendar using vanilla JavaScript and HTML canvas. In each one of these days I'm going to procedurally generate a unique Christmassy item because I need icons like these around this time and good free ones are hard to come by. I also want to easily scale and color them in different ways. I hope you'll follow along and implement your own versions so I can showcase them in a special video on the 24th. You'll practice working with coordinates, basic math, and various JavaScript programming techniques. It's a good project, I think, to learn about code modularity, reusability, and how to write consistent code. Today is day 15 and we're gonna draw a calendar. Coding with Rob. Let's code now. To add another item here, the calendar, we're going to go to index.html and add another function here in our array at the 15th index. Draw calendar. We'll implement this function in its own file. Calendar.js. And in VS Code, if we control click this, it's going to create the file for us here in the items folder. Now the draw calendar function, like all others, has the context as a parameter, the X, Y center locations, the size, and the hue for setting the color. Now two helper variables, the top and the left, I'm going to use them to draw a bounding box, a rectangle that is a square, really, same width and height. And it's going to show us where the item is going to be, and we're going to try to fit it in here. Now, the first thing I'll draw is a rounded rectangle for the general shape of the calendar. So let's go here and set the roundness for the corner, maybe 10% of the size. And now begin a path. I'm going to set the color to something very light because we will add emphasis to the header and the number for the calendar day. And then round, rect, left, top, size, size, very similar to this one here at the top, but also the roundness parameter to control those rounded corners. And fill. Save. Refresh. And there it is, our general shape. And I think we already don't need that kind of helper bounding box there, because this shape is pretty much like that. So next we'll draw the header. I'm going to have a height for it and just draw it as a rectangle at the top. Let's say the height is going to be 30% of the size. And let's fill now with a dark hue. Fill rect is one function that lets us draw a rectangle without specifically calling begin path and, and fill. And if you save and refresh, you're going to see this header section here. But I would like those rounded corners to be somehow preserved here on the top part. So for that, before drawing this, we could call clip. And that only lets us now draw new things in the space defined by the first item we drew. What I want to add next is some holes here. Let's start with uh, the one in the middle. And I'm going to go here and say the whole properties are going to go in this object, middle x, and the y is going to be top plus half the header height. I want it to be in the middle of the header. Then the radius of the hole could be maybe a third of the height. Let's see how that looks like. And the color, I'm setting it to the lightest hue. Now to draw it, we have our circle helper function at the whole properties like this. And with that specific fill color. And there it is. Now let's add two more, one on the left and one on the right. 
And for that, I'm going to transform this x attribute into x's. And this is going to be x minus header height x and x plus header height. This code here won't work as such, but what I plan to do is loop through those x's using a for each, like this, and for each of those, I'm going to run this piece of code, and let's remember to close it, like so, and replace here whole x with this x parameter that loops through all of these different values. So save, refresh, and there are our holes. Now they just puncture this header uh, part and we can see this lighter background but of course if you want to puncture everything like have transparent canvas here in this section you could do that by setting the global composite operation to destination out and now we can see this gray through it. Now what is still needed is some text here showing the day. And for that, I'm going to have to first deal with these changes. Like every time you clip or change the global composite operation, it's important to revert to the previous canvas state so that drawing future things isn't affected in some weird way. And I tend to do that by calling here save and then restore here when we are done with that uh, fancy stuff and after we restore we can define the text properties i'm going to hold them in an object like this the size let's go with half the size and then x in the center and for the y i'm going to add half the header height so that it looks in the center of this area right here not just in the center of everything which would put it a little bit not nice and let's draw this text by beginning a path i'm gonna set the fill style to that dark hue and then the font let's use this text size here pixels and i use the same font we used for these uh, placeholder numbers and the uh, fill text, I'm going to put here 15, but you can easily turn this to be a parameter. Save, refresh, and uh, this point is exactly in the center where I want it, but the text is not aligned. So I have to go here and say text align to center and text baseline to middle. And I think I want it a little bit thicker. So I'm going to go here in the beginning and say bold. Yeah, this looks good. Let's put this day as a parameter so that it's more useful, really. And I'm going to set the default to be 15. Still works. And uh, I'm getting these uh, Inception vibes. Get it? Like a calendar inside a calendar. No, no, no.